We know you've missed going back to school to meet with your friends, resume your activities, and just be able to get back to how life was like on campus. But for the UMians who didn't get to set foot on campus yet, whether you are in basic education, senior high school, or college, let's take a little trip to the campus you can hopefully get to visit soon as you finish your education with UM. Luckily, we've got some of our beloved teachers to show you around UM's colleges and campuses so you'll know what to expect when you come back to school. It's only proper to start to the place where it all began. The UM Bolton and Embassy Campus were among the first structures to be put up as the University of Mindanao was starting to make a name for itself 75 years ago. Here at the Bolton site, you can find many of the offices for student services like the Registrar, Student Accounting Office, and Cashier, among others. There's also a canteen where students and employees can purchase healthy food. Going further into Bolton campus, you can find on the first floor the College of Legal Education, where aspiring lawyers take their Juris Doctor degrees. There is even a dedicated library for law students across the cool and shaded quadrangle. On your way to the staircase to get the second floor, you get to pass by the AVR3, where lots of programs and other small gatherings are held. Going up to the second floor, you can find the office of the College of Business Administration Education. UM is the only school in Mindanao granted a Center of Excellence by CHED for its business and management programs, as well as Level 4 accreditation by the PACOCOA. So if you're planning on a career in business-related dealings, the CBAE is for you. Our college offers the following programs under the Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, Major in Entrepreneurship, Legal Management, Real Estate Management, Marketing Management, Financial Management, Human Resource Management, and the new program Major in Business Analytics. The third floor also houses our expansive library and information center that covers the Bolton side. Let's head on over to the Embassy Campus. Across the UM Bolton is the Embassy side, and it's named that way because it used to be the grounds for Japanese Embassy back in World War II. Today, it is a sprawling area that houses the gymnasium for large UM events, our admission office, our Center for Health Services, or the student clinic and the external relation office out front on the first floor. Going up, you can find the International Affairs Office where matters for foreign exchange students are processed among others. And walking further, you will find the office of the Senior High School Department. Outside of the Embassy Campus, on the Ponciano side, we have the UM Multitask Diagnostic Center, which offers various laboratory services like blood testing, x-ray, and doctor consultations. UM Bolton and Embassy Campus are located at the heart of downtown Davao. So it's easy to commute from here to many other places you might need to go. And speaking of which, did you know that UM has a campus at Matina? I'll send you over to our teacher friends in Matina Campus and they can show you around. We're now inside the University of Mindanao's largest campus, the 28-hectare Matina Campus, encompasses the Matina area going up to Ma'a. Right beside the Gravahan exit is the Basic Education Building, where it caters from kindergarten up to junior high school students with lots of space for learning and play. Going further inside the campus, you'll spot the four-story Business Engineering Building. Its first and second floor houses laboratories for engineering programs. It is the premier engineering school for its Level 4 accreditation granted by the Bakukoa and the Center of Development Studies by the Commission in Higher Education. UM College of Engineering offers the following programs, Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering, 
Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Electronics Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering, and Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering, major in Structural, Water Resource, Transportation, and Geotechnical. The third floor of the BE building is home to Davao Region's roster of top-notchers of the CPA licensure examination. The College of Accounting Education has Level 3 accreditation from Takakoa and is certified by the Commission on Higher Education as a Center of Development. The College of Accounting Education offers the following programs Bachelor of Science in Accountancy Bachelor of Science in Internal Auditing Bachelor of Science in Accounting Information System, Bachelor of Science in Management Accounting. The Learning and Information Center takes up the entire topmost floor of the B building. It houses all the university's books available for borrowing. Let's take a scenic trip to the College of Hospitality Education. Located near the UM Athena Gymnasium, the College of Hospitality Education has level 3 accreditation from Takakoa and offers the following programs. Bachelor of Science in Hospitality Management and Bachelor of Science in Tourism Management. The College of Hospitality Education also has industry-level facilities like the La Spezia Mini Hotel, the Function Hall, and the Kitchen and Bakery areas. Located behind the gymnasium is the UM Hangar, where students can test their inventions and other experiments. The hangar holds the university's Coleoptera Research Center, the first university-based center in the Philippines dedicated to study the conservation and cataloging of Philippine beetle species. Every large university, such as UM, has a place where students gather for major events. And UM doesn't just have its Bolton Gymnasium, we also have the Matina Gymnasium too, equipped with fold-away bleachers and professional standard flooring for the courts. The gym is the perfect venue for sporting and other extracurricular activities. Despite being a bustling school, there's plenty of space in UM Matina for some quiet time and to be surrounded by nature. UM Matina has a mini forest with tables and benches because UM believes that learning and rest isn't just limited to the walls of a room. Is this tour making you a little hungry? Across the gymnasium is the university canteen and food court, which serves a variety of affordable meals, snacks, and drinks, where students can eat comfortably. Tables are regularly sanitized and electric fans are provided. Let's head down to the JT building. Named after the school's founder, Guillermo E. Torres, the building is home to Davao Region's producer of top-notchers in the licensure examinations for teachers. The College of Teacher Education offers the following programs. Bachelor of Elementary Education, Bachelor of Early Childhood Education, Bachelor of Special Needs Education, Bachelor of Physical Education, and Bachelor in Secondary Education, major in Biological Sciences, English, Social Studies, Filipino, and Mathematics. Also, found on the first floor of the GET building is the Audiovisual Room 2, an air-conditioned and carpeted, fully equipped facility with cinema-style folded seating, which is frequently used for different programs. The second and third floor of the GET building is occupied by the premier criminology school in Davao, the College of Criminal Justice Education. The CCJE offers Bachelor of Science in Criminology and Bachelor of Science in Industrial Security Management. Heading further inside the campus, away from GET, will reach the Deputy Building. Named after former school president Dolores P. Torres, the four-story building houses the mini auditorium, the quality management office, research and publication center, institute of pedagogical and assessment center, some laboratories, and pocket gardens on its first floor. Located on the deputy's second floor is the College of Arts and Sciences Education. CASE offers the following programs, Bachelor of Arts in English, Bachelor of Arts in Communication, 
Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science, Bachelor of Science in Agroforestry, Bachelor of Science in Forestry, Bachelor of Science in Biology, Bachelor of Science in Mathematics, Bachelor of Arts in Political Science, Bachelor of Science in Public Administration, Bachelor of Science in Psychology, and Bachelor of Science in Social Work. The third floor of the DPT building houses the College of Health, Sciences, Education, or the CHSE. CHSE offers Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Bachelor of Science in Pharmacy, Bachelor of Science in Medical Technology, and Bachelor of Science in Nutrition and Dietetics. Sharing the floor with CHSE is the College of Computing Education. CCE offers Bachelor of Science in Computer Science, Bachelor of Science in Information Technology, Bachelor of Science in Information System, Bachelor of Science in Entertainment and Multimedia Computing, major in Game Development and Digital Animation. The topmost floor of the DPT building is home to the Creative Academic Unit of UM, the College of Architecture and Fine Arts Education. CAFAE offers Bachelor of Science in Architecture, Bachelor of Fine Arts major in Painting. Let's head back down and you'll see that across the DPT building is our professional school's building. It is led by its dean, Dr. Eugenio S. Kuhau, and serves to bring globally recognized ISO standard and Pakokoa accredited postgraduate and doctorate degrees to more Dabawenios. We're about to head out now, but before we leave, let's take a look at the UM Oval Track and Sports Stadium. It has a 400-meter rubberized track suitable for track and field training and other sporting activities. The sports stadium served as the venue for the 2019 Palerong Pambansa. Thanks for joining this campus tour. Oh, by the way, even though UM is already a formidable university that is second in the whole Philippines to offer the most number of Bakukoa accredited programs, we do not rest. The administration keeps on working very hard just to be sure that more Filipinos here and abroad are able to obtain quality, affordable, and open education. Stick around as we discuss the online enrollment process and online learning management system. Hope to have you here at UM soon, Ga! All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the University of Mindanao. This is our online program, I mean, session uh, for our programs uh, being offered here in the university, specifically in the College of Computing Education. All right, so we are so excited uh, to share to you guys of what are the perks of enrolling in this program. And this program are the following. Bachelor of Science in Entertainment and Multimedia Computing, major in Game Development. Bachelor of Science in Entertainment and Multimedia Computing, major in Digital Animation. And also the Bachelor of Science in Multimedia Arts. No? These um, programs no, are being offered here in the University of Mindanao. And so um, this afternoon, we together with us also is the one of the prof professors in the College of Computing Education, Professor Christopher, Christopher Ray A. Lungay. So later on, no, sir will be uh, the one to present all of this program. So I know you're excited, but of course, um, just to give you some um, details no, that we are also um, um, live, no, we are streaming live no, at, our, at our YouTube channel. So if you have problems no, along the way with your connection, so you can go to the YouTube channel of the university and you can still continue um, watching you know, and be able to know, know what are the important information with regards to these um, programs here in the University of Mindanao. I know you're excited. Can I have a thumbs up no, from you guys, a virtual thumbs up if you're now ready to listen and be informed of these programs. And so, yes, you are so excited. We are also excited to share it to you. Ladies and gentlemen, our speaker for this afternoon, again, one of the faculty in the College of Computing Education, Professor Christopher Ray A. Lungay. Sir? All right. Thank you, Sir Benji, for 
uh, for that uh, introduction. And uh, I hope that everyone will be uh, excited to know uh, about the two programs that we're going to introduce this afternoon, especially the entertainment and multimedia uh, computing, as well as the multimedia arts. All right. So without further ado, I will be sharing with you our slides. All right. Okay, so um, I know that uh, most of the viewers nowadays uh, would actually be uh, uh, asking uh, for uh, some information about uh, how to enroll and also about the details of these two programs, okay? Particularly uh, the programs that we have mentioned, okay? So uh, without further ado, we will be discussing about these uh, programs, okay? So and about uh, the outline, okay? So of our discussion for this afternoon, okay? So the studies and the careers in information and communications technology. Okay, so the, there are actually four topics in which we are also going to include, aside from the two programs that we are uh, that we are out to uh, to discuss. The first one would be the study paths. Okay, so for the two programs, as well as uh, the research. Okay, so the research direction and what would be expected out from that research uh, that uh, expect uh, that is actually expected to be uh, to be. Uh, to be uh, to, for for the students to be aware of, okay. And then on the third would be the internship, okay. So this is also in preparation for the careers ahead uh, for these two programs, okay. So uh, if you uh, the time that you are going to graduate, okay. So you are to be prepared on uh, many things, okay. And lastly, we have the careers, of course. No? So we are also going to check on those careers and also uh, what lies ahead after graduation uh, on, on these two programs. Okay, so the first would be the study paths. I have said uh, the direction of every student that, actually, that is actually en enrolled on these two programs, particularly the EMC and the MMA. Okay, but uh, before uh, going into that, uh, particularly the EMC and the MMA, there are also questions that would actually be arising. Like, if I am not a graduate of a TBL ICT, can I uh, still proceed to enroll in an ICT-related program or program? Of course, you can still enroll because in UM, we are going to guide those who are not uh, well-versed or that is not aligned with the ICT program, particularly uh, students uh, that is enrolled on different track when they are still in their senior high school uh, period. Okay, so particularly the two, no? so the Bachelor of Science in, in, in uh, Entertainment and com uh, Multimedia Computing, which is major in digital animation technology or game development. Okay, so that would also be exciting. No? And another exciting program would be the Bachelor in Multimedia Arts. Okay, so... Let's get along with the two programs. Okay, so in definition, okay, so about the EMC, okay, so it is actually the study and use of concepts, principles, and techniques of computing, and particularly design and development of multimedia projects and solutions. Okay, so it's not just about you are going to design, but you are also going to create uh, programs or even systems in particular to help others uh, to do their simulation, to do it, to do their um, um, visual um, um, projects, and also other things that would actually be related more into computing design and also computing solutions. Okay, so that's uh, that's the direction, and uh, it includes various applications such as. In science, okay, so particularly there are a lot of uh, EMC uh, that is actually in need, no, uh, that is in demand rather uh, in the industry because uh, of simulation uh, projects. And also, okay, to mention entertainment, okay, as well as in education, simulations, and also advertising, okay. So as far as we are, uh, we are aware, uh, most of the materials that we are actually using now is 
uh, using high end or mid end uh, outputs no so we are uh, being uh, we are using uh, the outputs of the entertainment and multimedia computing professionals and specialists okay so there are actually two specializations okay so we have the digital animation technology okay so which is actually more into the digital arts or digital animation and uh, all related to that and we also have uh, some of the uh, uh, some of the students would actually be talking about this because this is a uh, uh, this is actually about game development okay so game development but of course uh, it is also integrated with programming no so uh, with that it's uh, more uh, the digital or animation technology would actually be leading to animation and design while game development would be heading to game development with also uh, programming uh, method with programming methodologies and also uh, all that is actually related to that and then with um, okay so just to add up with game development no? okay so it is also the study and application of fundamental and advanced theories okay so applying those theories in game design scientific simulations okay use and development of gaming technologies and tools and production of commercially acceptable digital games okay so just like what we are downloading what uh, like what we are using and we are um, uh, we are playing no so and viable solutions for use in entertainment and scientific applications just like what i've said a while ago there are a lot of um, avenues and um, opportunities uh, in emc okay so it's not just about game development but also uh, and also in simulation and also assisting those who are in need of their issues and problems Okay, so for the digital animation technology, okay, so just an emphasis, okay, so this is also a study and application of fundamental and advanced theories and techniques, for, especially on the 2D and 3D animation. Okay, so use and develop, development for advancement of animation technologies, okay, and production of commercially acceptable content and viable solution for different platforms such as broadcast, okay, web and mobile cast okay so th these are uh, more um, most of their platforms or most of their outputs are actually being embedded on those platforms okay so for the entertain multimedia still okay so the specialization that we are going to uh, expect or the outcomes that we're going to uh, to see is the uh, multimedia systems development we also have the 2d and 3d animation as mentioned we have the game design and development, and also, last but not the least, the asset design. And for multimedia arts, of course, it is actually the study geared towards creative and effective storytelling and uh, expression. Okay, so particularly uh, talking about. Um, uh, different uh, ways and means of doing so, of doing uh, animation, okay, so, uh, and also multimedia arts through convergence of digital media technologies, forms, and practices. Okay, so the program prepares a student to develop knowledge and skills that they will enable them to communicate critically and effectively across a range of new media technologies and forms. Okay, so you're also going to be aware and you're also going to be oriented on, on how to use these tools. No? Okay, so students will demonstrate technical proficiency in the use of appropriate technologies required in the production of multimedia projects. Okay, so there is a lot of um, uh, chances outside, no? especially under multimedia arts, because nowadays, uh, the way we are entertained, it is actually under multimedia arts the way we actually do some of our tasks is actually still under or it is actually using multimedia arts and even in uh in in learning we are still using multimedia arts resources okay for multimedia arts okay so as a specialization and also uh 
expected out from the uh, from this program is as follows. Okay, so the graphics design, of course, that is expected. We have branding and advertising, as well as photography and film production, and 2D, uh, 2D and 3D animation. Okay, so there are uh, four um, specializations that we are going to expect or outcomes that we are going to expect from multimedia arts. Okay, for research work, okay, so this is the next discussion. Okay, so uh, what is expected from multimedia arts and EMC? Okay, so before, before we get into the, uh, to the details of the research of the two programs, uh, let's differentiate uh, the two research fields, no? different research uh, fields that uh, the College of Computer Education is also handling. Okay, so for thesis, Okay, so as it is actually being described, say a thesis is a technical report on a systematic investigation of a problem that can be solved. Okay, so it may include a solution, an approximate or a partial solution, a specific investigation, scientific investigation, or the development of result to the solution of a certain problem. So all of us here in the College of Computer Education are trying to look for solutions to solve those particular problems, okay? So it does actually in general. Okay, so a thesis is designed to add new information to an existing body of research. So the student should seek out a topic or methodology that has not previously been explored. Okay, so this is actually on the side of computing, but highly more into the um, looking for that new solution for this particular problem. While on capstone project, a capstone project is an undertaking appropriate to a professional field. Okay, so it should significantly address okay, an existing problem or a need, and particularly from uh, a large scale or a small scale uh, business or an organization. Okay, so a capstone project is typically more applied in nature. Okay, so it's not uh, in a theory approach, but instead it's going to be developed or it's going to be created. No? So a capstone may, may or may not utilize systematic data analysis. Okay? So as per uh, um, its definition, okay? so there is usually an end product always that provides some sort of materials, guide, plan, or evaluation that can be used by the community like I said, agency or a group facing the issue or problem at hand. Okay, so for uh, for the two programs that you are going to uh, uh, to expect, no, uh, for for the research outcome. Okay, so for BSEMC, okay, so particularly the GD students, okay, must complete a capstone project that focuses on the creation of particularly games or game development tools. Okay, so that's actually two. Okay, so game projects shall involve the complete game development life cycle. So you should be able to come up with a, uh, a game concept or if you want to create a game or if you are going to create a game development tool for uh, other people to create their own games. Okay, okay so for while D DAT or digital animation uh, specialization, students must complete a capstone project that focuses on the creation of animation content, okay, particular, okay, so, or in interactive multimedia project, okay, so this is in a form of that output, okay, from BSEMC, while B, uh, BMMA, okay, multimedia arts, okay, so students are required to complete a capstone project, Still, no, such as film production, animation, graphic design, and other multimedia projects anchored, okay, from research focusing on the impact, innovation, and solutions in the community. So you're you're still going to look for those issues or problems that you're going to solve. Then out from this methodology or this particular uh, research, you are going to help uh, this community or certain group. Okay, so these are also one of our um, rather few uh, examples of our uh, 
uh, researches. Okay, so we we were able to uh, to present or you uh, have a research from the Museo of Dabawenyo. and then we also have an AR. Okay, so our uh, augmented reality uh, research and as well as uh, mobile uh, application based research from these um, uh, students, no, in particular alongside with uh, some faculty. Okay, so this is another research, Waste Blitz. Okay, so an example. So this is a game uh, uh, for, uh, for a, uh, coming from uh, students. No? And then uh, another example of an output, although I am going to uh, show you a bit of uh, the slide or this animation. For the past few years, human trafficking or modern slavery has been the problem of every part of the world. There are many forms of exploitation into which people can be trafficked and held in slavery. However, organ trafficking is seldom discussed form due to its very organized and often stealth crime. On this informational animation, let us explain why is organ trafficking is still undetectable. Organ trafficking is the recruitment, transport, transfer, harboring, Or the deceased person, or the organs by means, organs can be taken in many ways. First is extortion. A victim may be kidnapped from their family, and organs removed without. Second, ailment. A vulnerable person is treated for an ailment which may or may not exist, and the organs are removed without the victim's knowledge. And lastly, trading. A victim formally or informally agrees to sell. Organ. This practice is considered to be common in Israel, India, China, Pakistan, Turkey, Nepal, Iran, Philippines, and former Soviet states in Eastern Europe. The Philippines is recently making it one of the top five source countries as a global. provider since the the most organ transplantism in the Philippines has been illegal. However, the country is struggling to eliminate the problem. Two administrative orders issued by the Department of Health to fight organ trafficking, specifically the selling of kidneys to foreign patients through a combination of misinformation and poverty. This encouraged the victim to sell their organs the traffickers. Selling of human organs has become uncontrollable. There are instances when parents themselves voluntarily give their children to organ smugglers in exchange for money. Illegal trade is on and 
crime. And it may happen at the hospital near us. Okay, so that is just one of the samples of the research uh, uh, research outputs uh, given to us by some of the graduates and some of the students of MMA as well as TEMC. For the past... Okay, so let's move on with our internship program under e, uh, EMC and MMA. So let's uh, have a few of the details. Okay, so for BS EMC, it is uh, required that uh the most of or rather uh they are required to have 460 hours of duty uh on OGT program under OGT program or practicum program and for BMMA they have 250 hours to, to needed to be accomplished okay so as it is actually being required the commission by the commission on higher education okay so we also have few host uh partner host training establishments okay so Namely, we have the detail, we have two IT solutions, we have in, infinite IT solutions, we have Ikigai for EMC and MMA, we have Gyrosoft, and we have government partners. We have the Commission on Higher Education as well as the UST, uh, and we also have a uh, partner, okay, so the Dabao Doctors uh, College Incorporated. Okay, so the, most of our interns. Uh, is also um, deployed on these establishments and partners. Okay, so another example, internship output. This is actually uh, the Tarsi PH. No? So this was also uh, created by one of the students or graduates of the, uh, uh, the uh, EMC. Okay, so for the OGT program, that was last first SEM 2019-2020. Okay, so... Uh, most of them are actually still having fun when it was uh, pre-pandemic, okay? And then uh, the second SEM, 2019-2020, okay? So they were deployed on their, uh, on their companies. Okay, so we also have internal um, um, deployment here in the university. Okay, so what they are doing is uh, under business process and also technical support and all that is related under their program. Okay, so we also have other programs, no? so DBS, uh, DBLIS. Okay, so they are also exposed on different um, um, uh, areas. No, so we have uh, the the government or the local government of Davao and also other partners in within the locality. Okay, so for number four, we have the careers. Okay, so this is where we are uh, heading after that we have graduated on uh, the mentioned programs. Okay, so for the entertainment and multimedia uh, computing, we have the following. Okay, so what would be our expectations after that we have graduated in EMC? Okay, so the multimedia systems programmer. Okay, so we have the game programmer. Okay, we also have... The game tester, it's not just about creating and developing. It's also about testing areas and making quality out of that testing. And then we have the game designer. Okay. So aside from that, we have the production designer, the technical animator, the technical director, which is the one who actually gives the direction for the team. And we also have the sound engineer. And for multimedia arts, you have the following uh, expectations, okay? So either you're going to become a graphic designer, a photographer, or videographer, the 2D or 3D animator, the digital marketing specialist, okay? So that's uh, also an exciting uh, area now. And we have the video and audio specialist. And with that, we also have the visual effects artist. And also, last but not the least, and I would say that it would also be one of the best is the creative director. But wait, there's more on these two programs, okay? So we also have an educational tour, okay? So here uh, in the locality as well as uh, in any areas that we are uh, invited or we are requested to, uh, to visit or 
we we are going to request for a visit and uh, hopefully uh, uh, we could actually also have our uh, international educational tour no? so hoping that uh, um, uh, these measures that we are experiencing right now or these issues that we are experiencing right now will not be affecting our program anymore okay so for the college of computer education here are the following uh, accreditations and also our certifications okay for pakokoa okay we are proud to say that we have uh, the the following okay so accreditations that we have uh, for the past few years no? so level 4 uh, accreditation we have the bachelor of science in information technology uh, bachelor of science in computer science okay so for level 2 accreditation we have the bachelor in library information science and for candidate status, we have the Bachelor of Science in Information Systems, for uh, as well as the Bachelor in Multimedia uh, Arts. For uh, for the CHED COD or cent uh, Center of Development, we have the Bachelor of Science in Information Technology, and we also have the Bachelor of Science in uh, Computer Science. Then we have the PICAB accreditation or what we call the Sol Accord. Okay, so we have the Bachelor of Science in uh, Information Technology. We also have the Bachelor of Science in Computer Science. And the international and, nas uh, and national certification certifications is as follows. Okay, so we have the Microsoft Office Specialist. We also have the Adobe Certified Professional. And then we also have uh, the Information Technology Specialist. And last but not the least, of course, we have the TESDA National Certification. And the only program that actually belongs to uh, computer education that has a board examination is the Bachelor in Library and Information Science. Thank you. Stay safe and stay sane. Sir Bench? All right. So thank you very much, uh, Sir, um, Sir Chris. Professor Chris, for giving us all those information with regards to these uh, programs no, uh, under the College of Computing Education. So for our um, senior high and incoming freshmen here in Zoom, you can actually um, type your question on the chat box, chat box or you can also turn on no, your microphone and ask your question. All right, do you have questions ba, for these programs? Or what do you want to know more about these programs? And Professor Chris here uh, is very willing to answer. All right, so still, I think you're still contemplating and you're overwhelmed with what are the things no, that you can do once you enroll with these programs. But for a while, let us just um, view this video with regards to what to expect on the next semester and how can you enroll via online in the University of Mindanao. So please take a look at this video. Hi Ga! What to expect for the upcoming semester? Because of the pandemic, UM is taking action to make sure that students' education is not left behind. Get ready for the new normal online blended learning. As per Management Committee on Instruction, presented in the Quality Management Council, the entire thing is designed as a hybrid mode of instructional delivery with online learning through the LMS as the primary platform during the pandemic transition. We have e-learning through email, SMS, and group chat. M-learning through smartphones, tablets, and other mobile devices. B-learning through Broadcast University on Air. Correspondence learning or the SIM SDL manual, which can be picked up or arranged by courier. And finally, the residential or face-to-face -face mode depending on quarantine conditions. In short, students shall be encouraged to invest on the primary mode while taking advantage of the blenders. But 
don't worry! The school shall adapt to both asynchronous and synchronous learning where students can keep up with class on their own convenient pace. So, what are you waiting for? Enroll now at the University of Mindanao! You've heard about the University of Mindanao's quality, affordable, open education that is ISO certified, accredited with various highly respected organizations, and believes in a holistic education to develop diamonds in the rough. But how do you enroll as a new student in the middle of a pandemic? Step 1. Please fill out the online student registration through this link found on your screen or visit the official university website with the address as follows. This is what the form will look like upon loading on your screen. After you've filled in your details, please take note of the reference number that will be issued. You will need this reference number for the online payment. Step 2. You can forward your down payment through these following banks or payment centers. Step 3. Please wait for an email and text message containing your student ID number and the access code. Please note this might take at least two to three days, but if there is further delay, please call the UM Cashier's Office through this number. Step 4. After you've received your student ID number and access code, please log in to the UM Student Portal through this website address shown on the screen. Step 5. Under the Online Enrollment option, please click Enroll Course. Step 6. Choose your desired session, then click the Yes option on the screen to finalize your class schedule. Afterwards, please take a screenshot of your enrolled subjects. This screenshot of your subjects will serve as your unofficial soft copy of the Certificate of Matriculation, also known as your Form 1. Step 7. The university's online enrollment system will provide you with your official UM email address. It will be sent to you via the email address that you wrote down in the student registration form, student portal, and text alert. Step 8. Remember, if quarantine restrictions in your area and in Davao City allow, you may claim your official Form 1 and UM Student ID at the Admissions Office, located at UM Embassy along Bonifacio Street, Davao City, right across the Bolton campus. Step 9. Please submit to the university these other required documents shown on the screen on or before the end of the semester. Congratulations! You are officially part of the UM community! See you soon, ga! All right, so think that that was you know, the videos no, for um, what to expect on the next semester and also you know, how to enroll in UM via online. So do you have um, questions regarding our program um, being um, presented this afternoon? Meron ba? All right, so I think there's none. No? So... In order for you to know more about other programs no, that the university is um, um, offering, so we do this um, program orientation. Okay, so um, you can please follow us on our social media pages so that you would know what, what would be the other schedules of the next program orientation or program session. So maybe on the next week, uh, we will be um, focusing on the criminology program, um, engineering programs, and others. So please follow us on our Facebook channel, Instagram, Twitter, and also TikTok. And for you to review other uh, programs of the university, you can also go to our YouTube channel. Please follow us and subscribe so that you'll be notified of the recorded videos no, of every program that we offer in the university. So that's the University of Mindanao official. All right.
So, and also, if you have questions with regards to student accounting or, I mean, your tuition or scholarships, no, just uh, screenshot no, all those numbers there and they will cater you. And in terms of admission requirements of the university, please call also the admission office and register office. They will cater your queries on that. All right. So please watch out no, from, from time to time. No? In order for you to be notified, please follow us on our social media pages. So again, this is, these are our social media pages. And so I think we're done. And we thank you for joining us this afternoon. And hopefully we are able to help you in deciding no, of what program no, should you take on the, ne on, on the next year. All right. And we congratulate you in advance no, for your um, um, senior high school uh, endeavor. And we also thank you, uh, Professor um, Chris, no, for joining us no, and for giving us a lot of information with those programs offered by the university under the College of Computing Education. And so by this time, we, we say thank you and bye-bye and hope to see you soon here in UM, Mangaga. Bye-bye and God bless.